Uh, my name is Victoria. And uh, today, uh, within this time, I will try to give you as much information as possible to, so you have an overview of our university, about the uh, admission process, and about uh, cooperation with the agencies. And of course, all the questions are welcome, uh, so please feel free to, uh, to ask questions. I'm not sure if the slide is the next one. No, the first one still. Okay, uh, just a few facts mm -hmm. about Estonia. Uh, for those of you who haven't been yet to our country, so uh, also you can imagine uh, where we are. We are location of Estonia is Northern Europe. Capital, probably you saw the, uh, lots of pictures of medieval city, the old town. And of course, we are a member of different organizations such as European Union, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and Eurozone and Schengen area. And uh, we are a small country, but a bit bigger than Denmark and Holland with a, a small area and with a population of just 1.3 million citizens. And uh, Estonian language, our official language, uh, is something unique to the country and has a very melodic sound. And usually uh, Estonian speaks, uh, speak uh, fluent also Finnish, Russian, German, English definitely. Uh, so uh, like uh, communication and always possible. And of course we are, uh, let's say, we are have a tree hugging spirit. That's why we have in Estonia the four best air quality in the world. And um, Estonia song and uh, dance celebration is a local signature event. And reason why Estonia is often referred as a city nation. So these are there just a few facts about Estonia. Uh, and also, uh, probably you heard uh, you heard that Estonia is a e country. We are very digitally developed, and from voting to signing documents to doing taxes online, Estonia offering uh, digital services to to all the citizens. Uh, and additionally, Estonia is the first e government. Uh, in the world and offers re e residency to people from all over the world with which you can actually register your own company here. And now we are moving further closer to where a university is situated. Uh, here you can see the picture of the smart city inside city of Tallinn, where uh, we say place where future happens. This is the largest uh, smart city in Baltics and biggest privately owned business campus in Northern Europe. It is an international and diverse environment uh, focused on uh, creating a knowledge-based working, growth and living environment for talents that uh, supports the competitiveness of uh, every member of the community and of course attracts a lot of talents to come um, and just uh, a place where new business models like form. If you just check some numbers about this smart city, you can see that it's a huge area with a lot of space also to develop a lot of international offices uh, with uh, different nations from 50 plus countries. You can see, you really understand this is the city inside the city where you see the number of employees working here on a daily basis. And here, also, this uh, smart city offers to every community member a lot of services. Let's say they very much care about health. They have a, a HR networking. They have international office. They have uh, experts from different university, universities, not just ours. They offer mentor programs, study opportunities, conferences, scholarships, job shouting. Day. So quite a lot of opportunities for our international students as well. And now here you see the building of our university, Estonian Entrepreneurship University, where I am right now uh, presenting you our university. 
and uh, why to choose uh, Estonian Entrepreneurship University? What is, what is so special? Uh, the, the first thing, of course, that we are very close to business world, uh, very fast moving innovators who teach here, who work here, who study here. Uh, we get knowledge from the best expert and, uh, experts and practitioners. And uh, what is the most important probably for students, uh, all our students and staff, uh, we cooperate as partners. So we treat our students as partners. And uh, some also information where we started our way. Uh, university was established in 1992, as you see, in the heart of the smart city and business campus. And our 1,600 students make us the market leader in applied education and private largest private university in Estonia. Uh, we pride in our hands on uh, uh, programs where learning is done uh, by doing actually. Uh, our network of uh, partners from business world, uh, uh, from startups, established industry leaders, and our lean organization toward making the study experience as smooth as possible. Uh, we have a network of uh, graduators. You can see the number more than 5,000 alumni at the moment. And we are internationally accredited uh, and the highest accreditation uh, in Estonia possible. Uh, also, we do have and just the reasons what we offer. Of course, we offer to our students career support if needed internship placement also can be guaranteed for every student. Uh, for international students, we offer a comprehensive Estonian language course in every program, which is a great opportunity and advantage to our students. Accommodation for the first semester, 100% uh, guarantee because we have our dormitories. I will uh, speak about it more uh, with the next slides. And of course, we uh, uh, like we have very personalized support uh, and concealing through all the studies. And uh, we offer like different meetups, events, trips, uh, and very welcome community here. And also we have the, the first week when studies start, we have orientation week. So it, uh, the, the start will be very smooth for our students. This is just a picture of a campus, how it looks like the backyard of the university. And uh, it's a very inspiring environment with different uh, companies, as I said before, business, but not only. This is also a campus for creativity and innovations, a place surrounded with cafes, restaurants, fitness centers, pool, gym, health center. So uh, yes, uh, it's all like a short distance from the university. And speaking about international students who are coming here to study, they have also options uh, to work during their studies. And at, unless it doesn't interfere with their studies, so studies must be completed within a nominal period of studies. And uh, international students do not need separate work permit to do their job. And working hours also are not limited. And uh, as you see, a short uh, addition that students are allowed to stay in the country after successful graduation for nine months. And of course, if they uh, get a working place, they can apply uh, to extend their leaving permission as well. So there are different options for students. Regarding the living experience, uh, expenses in Estonia, I would say it's uh, quite affordable compared to the rest of the uh, European Union. Uh, average uh, monthly expenses for living uh, and here I'm speaking about accommodation, transport, food, uh, and living in the dormitories of uh, Estonian Entrepreneurship University can be around five or 600 euros per month. 
which is uh, very affordable. And also for uh, uh, Tallinn, where we are situated, offers free public transport for citizens. So once they have this uh, temporary residence permit uh, for studies, uh, they will have uh, this special uh, transportation card. Um, yeah, this is uh, the main entrance to our dormitories, which is situated uh, just a few steps away from the university building itself. Uh, this is the next building, and it was recently uh, renovated. We have uh, 82 places that are reserved for foreign students. Uh, there are rooms, uh, larger rooms and a bit smaller rooms. So it's up to you to decide uh, which ones uh, you would like. There are all the utilities included. Uh, also, um, all, the, uh, all the necessary things uh, around here, also the short distance, um, like um, a uh, shopping center, just five minutes working a uh, walk from here. So yeah, very comfortable and uh, reach to the old town to the city center, just also a few steps. And now I will tell you a bit about uh, our programs that they offer for international students at the Estonian Entrepreneurship University. Uh, these are the bachelor programs uh, for uh, international students taught in English language, uh, creativity and business innovation, software development, entrepreneurship, game design and development. And game design is very unique in Europe, the study program. And uh, study nominal period uh, is three years full-time study, which means every week from Monday to Wednesday. And tuition fee for these three uh, programs uh, is 5,480 euros per uh, year, again. Uh, and master program that we offer in English language is uh, International Business Administration, two years. Uh, again, full-time study, and again, from uh, Monday to Wednesday, and tuition fee per year is a bit higher, uh, 5,720. We don't have a separate uh, admission uh, fee or any application fee. Also, because we have very different international students from uh, lots of countries all over the world, we also offer our international students uh, programs that are taught on, uh, in Russian language. And here you can see the programs that we do offer. They are both written in Russian and English. So you know that we have these options as well. And again, we have uh, undergraduate programs and uh, one uh, master program as well, uh, uh, enterprise strategic management. And you see the tuition fee for Russian, uh, Russian taught programs a bit lower. But what is the difference? The difference uh, if English speaking programs you're studying from Monday till Wednesday every week, then Russian speaking programs, this is a session studies and regularly they study from Thursday till uh, Sunday once in three weeks. Uh, about admission process, uh, we also accept online applications through our official homepage. Um, I will show again the homepage so you know. And we have admissions open twice a year for English speaking, uh, English taught programs. Uh, and here you see the list of criteria for admission that should be fulfilled. Uh, the first one, of course, regarding uh, education. If you're applying for undergraduate programs, then you have uh, to have internationally recognized secondary education. If you apply for master's program, then a bachelor's or professional higher education degree. Uh, motivation letter or short essay is very important uh, because once you reach the stage where you have interview with the head of a study program, uh, very important to, uh, to have the motivation for, uh, for the studies and motivation for the field you're interested in and what you are supposed to, or what your uh, goals for this program. So you need to have a perspective for your future. 
Also, you have an admission test and video resume that you're supposed to do through our system as well. Uh, after that, when the document is uh, all complete and correct, uh, you will have admission interview. And uh, of course, if we are speaking about uh, English taught uh, study programs, then you are supposed to have an English proficiency proof. This can be also YELTS or TOEFL. And you can see the requirements, 1.5 uh, at least for the undergraduate programs and six uh, is at least for uh, master programs. And just as an idea that the closest admission uh, period is going right now and open, and uh, it will end actually by May already. But if you have, just in case you have students uh, from European Union, it is till the end of July, and the next uh, period will be till the end of November. And how to apply? Very easy. Field an online application, upload the document, then you have a test and a video resume, and then there will be interview, just a few steps. Uh, you can also get more information on our social media channels if you would like to get more information what we offer, what we do, what is happening and where students can participate and get information, you can just join us uh, with the, in, uh, social media. Um, about cooperation with the agencies, uh, we offer a 10% commission from uh, the first academic year tuition fee after six months of studies of the, the student recruited. So we need to see that the student is really came here to study and he's studying a full time, uh, like uh, attending all the lectures and making his exams. So we are sure that he came here for studies. Then uh, the tuition fee for the first academic uh, year must be paid in full before signing the learning agreement uh, at the university here once the student arrived. And uh, of course, what is more important, uh, all the acceptance documents uh, for visa to come to Estonia and join uh, university will be sent together with the tuition fee invoice. And of course, invoice must be paid before students start his traveling to Estonia. Uh, and again, my contacts. So, you know, I'm an international marketing coordinator and regarding recruiting international students, you can contact me uh, via email, phone. I also use Skype and Teams if uh, it will go that far. And uh, just as an idea, I will uh, finish my presentation with the famous words like uh, coming together. Together is the beginning, staying together is a process, and working together is a success. So my invitation, let's uh, make us all successful. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much, Victoria, for the presentation. Don't just close it because I think we're going to use it for the agencies who okay. will need some additional information. Mm -hmm. And let's go with, with, with the questions. So the first one is, what is the age limit for the application? for the student to apply? Uh, we don't have any age limits. And we have uh, students uh, right away coming from the secondary school or college. And we also have students at the age of 40 and 50. So our average uh, age of the students, I would say um, international students 25 plus and uh, in generally uh, 30 and plus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next one is, do you accept transfer students into your bachelor degree program? Um, I would say that we do not use this uh, word like transfer students. Uh, uh, we say we have the process like recognition of the previous learning and study. So once the student is admitted, he can submit application and uh, ask him to transfer some of his previous studies, yes. But this must be uh, conducted with the, all the requirements of the subjects at uh, EOS at our university. Uh, you are muted. Oh, sorry. Do you have any scholarships? 
Uh, we do have different scholarships. Uh, all the information is provided on an official website. Uh, with they are not, let's say, like a whole year round uh, open. They are very different depending on, um, uh, first of all, this, uh, the level of studies and, of course, on the aim. But uh, uh, yeah, this scholarships, like probably some agents are asking, like covering the full uh, tuition fee. No, we do not offer, but it's fair to say that at the moment we do have from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, supporting international students um, uh, scholarship uh, for international students from uh, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine. Okay, thank you. The next one is, um, how is the visa acceptance rate at the embassies in Africa? Uh, well, I would say that, uh, again, we do not influence uh, any embassy. We cannot do that. Uh, and, of course, it's usually all very individually. Uh, we cannot guarantee that you will be accepted and you will get visa. And we always say you try. It depends on the person and, and their individually. Okay. Uh, one also question is, can you please leave this slide with your contact information? Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one is there is a study plus work plus live opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned before, international students are uh, allowed to work during their studies. So basically, uh, English taught programs we are providing from Monday till Wednesday, Wednesday studies. And from Thursday till Sunday, you are free, whatever you want to do, working, traveling, just resting or doing assignments. And are there any like limits for the students who want to work? Uh, there are no hour limits. Just the main, uh, the most important thing that it doesn't interfere with the studies and the student attending lectures because we do uh, check the um, uh, the presentance of our international students because we are obligated to to provide this information uh, if it's a full time studies or part time studies to our uh, police and body uh, board uh, department. So as long as a student is actually studying and mm -hmm. attending lectures, there is no kind of problem no. with... No. Okay. No. And will you accept uh, the Indian nationality students? And well, is And yeah. is, uh, in, and is ours ma uh, a mandatory certificate or do you accept any other certificates? Uh, 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 I would say we are a very international university and we have students from 27 countries at the moment and we accept all students. Uh, of course, it depends how, uh, how uh, successfully you will all pass the test, the interview, your motivation. There are no special requirements for any country. It just uh, must be the admission process requirements all fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next one is, can you please share your WhatsApp contact in the chat if it's possible? Uh, okay, yeah, I, I will do that. Mm -hmm. It will be just a different phone number, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The English language requirements, do you accept online certificates, maybe like Duolingo, or any kind of accredited English language school that I furnish in the UK? Uh, well, uh, again, it uh, can be provided, but the last uh, decision, last word, uh, stays for our international office. We do not have a specific list of what agencies we do accept, but all of our students, uh, like till now, uh, they all had like Yelts and Teufel. And the, definitely, for sure, there was a time once COVID started uh, when the students were supposed to make online tests because there were no any other option. Yes, we did accept it. Mm -hmm. And what are 
the most general entry requirements for international students? Once again, please. Uh, requirements, I can show again uh, uh, the admission slide. So you can see, first of all, the education requirements. So it will be internationally recognized. And we have the agency where we do send uh, the documents provided from the applicants to prove that they, um, have a, they are suitable for our education system. And then it goes motivation letter or essay, admission test video. A resume, an interview, and English. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. The next one is uh, approximately how much student can earn working part time, and would it be efficient to cover the living costs? Uh, it depends. I would say we have very different students. Some of them come uh, already with the uh, experience like walking before or studying before and of course they find um, a, a better job and with them a bigger salary and income um, but there are young students who are coming off to secondary school and of course they can apply only for a simpler job so it's really different but uh, you can check the minimum salary for Estonia which is at the moment uh, about like 500 and something euros and of course the average salary in the country the last statistics say it's about like 1500 so probably yes if you find a good place you can um, yes uh, find find yourself definitely mm -hmm. and uh, what would be almost same question the average salary after completing the bachelor programs from your institution? Well, would it be a competitive salary? Uh, as you probably know, uh, different fields of uh, business uh, offer different salaries. If we take hospitality, let's say, it's a bit probably lower income. If you take IT uh, field, then of course, it is very uh, good paid uh, field. So it depends, again, this is all very individual. I cannot tell you the exact number. I just can give uh, probably ideas. It could be starting from a thousand euro, or it could be if it's IT department on game design and development, it could be three and four thousand a month. Mm -hmm. And do you have any students from Ghana and Nigeria? Uh, definitely, we do have. Mm -hmm. Do international students will get any? Uh, stay back option after the graduating like do will they have time to to look for the job etc yes i as i mentioned in my presentation you have nine months uh, after successful graduation uh, to see the options if you find the job then you apply again for uh, extending your temporary living permit uh, but uh, if by the end of nine months you didn't like uh, find a place or you didn't go to continue your studies then uh, probably you will need to leave the country mm -hmm. do international students are allowed to bring their families along with them uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's better to ask embassy. <laughs> this is not, <clears throat> nothing to do with the university, unfortunately. But yes, we do hear students who uh, come in with their spouses and wives and children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you please show us again the slide with the prices? With the prices. Okay. Uh, there was an uh, undergraduate program mm -hmm. in English. So you can see 5,480. And the master program, it is 5,720. Mm -hmm. And there are also two questions that are similar. So the first one is, uh, is there a need for a student who has the basic high school diplomas, education in general, to provide an English language certificate? And what about the English spoken countries, like for example, Nigeria and other who have English as their native language? Do they still need to provide the institution with the certificate of English? Uh, we are not asking the English proficiency certificate from uh, such countries as um, Australia, Great Britain, US. 
Um, but the other countries, even if they have the official language uh, English, uh, it's not enough for uh, academical English. That's why, yes, we are asking for to prove. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's clear enough. Um, do you have students from Azerbaijan? Yes. Okay, the next one is, do you have any kind of master program that is connected with the hotel management? And uh, no, for master programs, we have uh, English taught just one, uh, International Business Administration and Russian Language Enterprise Strategic Management. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is, uh, you mentioned that you're working with a lot of companies. Is there a possibility to get any kind of um, internship there during the studies or at least after the studies? Uh, definitely yes, because our head of uh, heads of study programs uh, they do give advices to our students or which company to contact uh, and of course suggest some uh, options for them. Uh, but we always say that it's better if student will try to look for the place himself because he or she can find a, a better place that he or she is more interested and of course because there are so many companies around here in the business campus uh, we uh, also have this job shadowing day so international students are also welcome to go and see what is happening in these companies and maybe they are interested really in internship or even a workplace there mm -hmm. can you please once again share the information about the fall semester deadlines and the deadlines in general for the admission. Okay, this is a fall semester deadline for applications. And if we speak about uh, spring semester intake, so the deadline for international students will be end of November and the studies will start uh, 1st of February. Mm -hmm. And I will just remind you that you have the dead ones at the bottom of the slide. So if you cannot find them. All right. The next question is, after the graduation, uh, do all of the students find the job? Or what is the percentage of the students who are coming back home because they didn't find a job? Um, we do not keep the statistics at the moment. Uh, because it's uh, quite difficult, uh, as you probably guess, uh, to contact every student and every alumni that we have. But generally speaking, those who are very interested to stay after graduation in Estonia, they do find a job and they do stay here and continue their life here. But uh, there are some students who are coming here with the goal just to have this international European uh, knowledge and education with the big plans to go back to their home country and develop the, their life there. So we do not have this percentage. Mm -hmm. The next one is any information on the agency onboarding process, how to start to cooperate with you? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, first of all, uh, you can just write me or through this uh, NET24, you also can send a request for co collaboration. And when we start from there, and yeah, we just discussed also the agreement uh, of cooperation, quite simple and short. We will definitely, once we agree that we are ready to start cooperation, I will send the agreement. Uh, and that's it. And in general, would you say that the studies are difficult and what is the dropout percentage from the university or does it depend fully on the student? Um, I would say it depends fully on the student and mostly that we see uh, students drop uh, due to the reason that they have chosen a wrong study program. Then we usually advise another one because sometimes, yes, they say it's not that interests me or it's a wrong. I had a different like uh, overview of that. Uh, or another problem, they cannot um, maybe find enough of uh, finances to support themselves. 
this is the reason, but it's a very small percentage, I would say. And um, actually, uh, yes, we uh, really actually recommend within the first semester, if you feel like a student feel like that it is a wrong study program, it's better to change it at the beginning and join the right one. Okay, so uh, we are out of the questions at the moment. Dear agencies, please also send do you still have any kind of questions uh, so Victoria will be able to answer them all because if not then I think we will be finishing already thank you very much for the presentation it's uh, it's a very great honor and ideal to to have you at our network the presentation was great I would say it was perfect because we covered a lot of information and it was very informative and all the recordings of this presentation will be sending out to all of the agencies. So please don't ask for the presentation itself. You will have the whole video with the answers to all of the questions. And I see that uh, still some people have their hands raised. So just type in your questions if you have some, or yeah, we still have some questions. Okay. <laughs> um, can you please tell us about the refund policy? Uh, the refund policy, uh, it will be sent to the student um, together uh, with the other documents such as conditionally acceptance letter and um, uh, invoice for the first academic year tuition fee uh, to the student when he successfully passed uh, interview. Um, and uh, refund policy says that um, uh, due to specific uh, situation, student has the right to uh, to uh, to uh, cancel the agreement. Uh, that usually the reason uh, that uh, student didn't get visa at the embassy. So we do not have students who just cancel for their own reasons. I would say it's usually the very serious uh, reason, whether it is a uh, real administrative like embassy uh, decision or it's a very difficult, probably personal reason. So we do accept them as well. And if you would describe the refund procedure in general, what are the steps the students must do in order to, to do the refund? Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, of course, this is to let no international office and admission office that uh, they would like to make a refund and give the reason, uh, like very informative reason, and then they will advise you to write an application probably, provide perhaps some documents, and usually within it is 14 days, if the reason yes, uh, good enough, it will be transferred back. Thank you very much also for inviting us and giving a chance to present our university.